this week we're in North Idaho hunting whitetails with my youngest boy, Finn. In today's world, most of us live life indirectly, working for a paycheck to buy the things we need that someone else produces. For most, that relationship works great, but there are some who prefer to cut out the middleman and go straight to the source. It's work that makes you feel good. Idaho's minimum age for hunting big game is 10, and Finn just turned 10 this year, so he has got a pocket full of tags and he's raring to go. Some people will cringe at the sight of a kid with a gun, but for us, it's just a tool there to help us accomplish a job. And if handled respect and safety is no more dangerous than a saw or a hammer. I'll put it on safety. I think I had an exact same spot. You think so? You want to go out there and look? together after a bit of time on the range we head to a neighbor's farm to see if we can find some deer in the open fields field and then there's another field just beyond that there's you can see the deer out there
get down this draw. Come up that way because I think they're going to come down in the draw a bit. While watching a couple of does in front of us, another deer comes out of nowhere, walks right into us, spooks, and takes everything in the field with her. Although whitetails aren't the most vocal deer species, they will come to calls, and being able to use your voice to imitate the grunt of a whitetail certainly has its uses.
shit of a rich. Well, what do you think? It's pretty view. Is that what you want me to think? Pretty view, Jeff. <laughs> what do you think about the morning? You think, you think this is a better place to hunt than where we've been? I think it is too. Well, the, uh, this is about the end of the where I have permission to hunt. And it's getting kind of late in the morning. It's almost 8. So, eight. so saw so lots of deer um, just didn't have either oh, almost got three shots almost had three shots um, didn't have a either a shot he was really confident in or like that little buck that just wasn't a that would have been a gimme shot but it was just not a good shot to take he wasn't he wasn't a good buck he didn't come to us we just needed him to get a little bit lower underneath that hill to get get that some Water. dirt behind his vitals because if we didn't. Yep, could have, could have shot through him or missed him and who knows how where that bullet shoot, would go. How do we shoot through him? Those bullets go through him. So just over this hill right here, just on that next hill, I can see a couple of deer. So we're gonna have to ease around this field edge so we can get a little bit closer to them, okay? So just stay right behind me. If you see me stop, I want you to just stop right then, okay? So that buck walked over the hill and I imagine he's probably gone for the day. Those does are down in the little valley so we could slip down here and see if we could get on top of this hill if you want to shoot one of those does or we can come back another day and try to get a buck. It's up to you. What do you want to do? What would have more meat on it? The buck would have more meat, yeah. Because they're bigger, they're just bigger. They're bigger animals. They're much bigger than a doe. Hmm. Do you want to? Do you want to go up that hill and see if you can get a shot at those does, or do you want to? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay. All right, we'll just leave those, leave those sticks. Huh? Let's just leave them for now. The distance to these deer is only about 270 yards, which for an experienced shooter is not a difficult shot. But with this being Finn's first season, I don't want to take any chances. And so we're going to have to cut that distance down a lot.
Good shot, boy. Good shot. Did I get it? You got her, buddy. You got oh her. Oh my god. She dropped dead. Good. Good shot. Boy. Almost got a shot at a buck. We almost got a shot at actually two bucks. Yeah. Uh, go yeah, well, I'm gonna come back. <sighs> well, what'd you think? I wasn't videoing the whole time. Mom was, Finn was talking to mom. <sighs> Dang it. Did you get the shot on film? Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah, I got the shot. I don't know if I got the deer. I didn't think I was going to hit right where I wanted to hit. Well, you made a good shot on her. She dropped like a rock. <laughs> what, she dropped? Yeah, yeah she, she dropped. Right she didn't go anywhere. For a non-hunter, it's easy to see that smile on a hunter's face and confuse that with the joy of killing. But the act of killing really doesn't have anything to do with it. That smile comes from the accomplishment of something difficult. It comes from providing for yourself and your family. See that rifle. What, are you shooting her again? No, I just want to. All right, there you go, buddy. And taking part in a ritual as old as time itself. Pretty dope. Pretty, aren't they? You need to make a cut, like just like that. Nope, other way. This down, down. Like this? Yep. Mm -hmm. All the way to the rib cage. There you go. Now cut that piece that's connecting down low, right there. Yep. Okay. So cut this. Then. <laughs> All right. So you see how you're you're, you're getting your knife at a two. There, that knife needs to be like that. Right along the ribs. Dad, mm -hmm. can you get me another deer tag? <laughs> uh, you still got a elk tag and a bear tag. There are many milestones in a hunter's life, but none quite so memorable as putting meat in the freezer for the first time. I hope you all enjoyed it and will join us on our next outdoor adventure.